Just before we get started with today's video, I do want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring it. To support today, I found out and learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash brainfood and sign up for free. One moon day is approximately 29 and a half Earth days. This rotation coincides with its orbit around the Earth so that we only see about 59% of the surface of the moon from Earth. When the moon first formed, its rotational speed and orbit were very different than they are now. Over time, the Earth's gravitational field gradually slowed the moon's rotation until the orbital period and the rotational speed stabilized, making one side of the moon always face the Earth. So how does this work? Simply put, tidal friction. For a slightly less simple explanation, we have to put our science caps on. But stick with us, because it really is fascinating, I promise. To start with, think of how the moon causes major tides on the Earth due to the moon pulling at the Earth via its gravitational field. The Earth has this same effect on the moon, and being 81.28 times more massive, the effect is much more powerful. So, as the mass of the moon is attempting to go one way in a straight line, the Earth is simultaneously pulling it another way towards the Earth. Further, the effect of the Earth's gravitational field is stronger on the side of the moon closest to the Earth than on the far side, and the same with the moon's gravitational field's effect on the different parts of the surface of the Earth. This combination essentially stretches the Earth and the Moon, creating tidal bulges on both celestial bodies. This occurs on both sides of each, with the bulge on the sides closest together from gravity and on the sides farthest away from inertia. In the latter case, the matter is less affected by the gravitational force, with inertia dominating in this instance. To put it another way, the matter is trying to move in a straight line away from the Earth, and the gravitational forces here aren't as strongly able to overcome this, which creates the bulge on that side. So back before the Moon was tidally locked with the Earth, the bulge on the side of the Moon nearest to Earth ended up slightly leading thanks to friction and the fact that the Moon rotated faster than its orbital period period around the Earth. So with this slightly leading bulge being offset from the line of gravitational pull between the Moon and the Earth, this created a torque which, over time, resulted in the Moon's rotation slowing until it became tidally locked with the Earth. Thus, only one side faces the Earth. Do note here that the bulge on the far side of the Moon has the opposite effect, but the bulge closest to the Earth dominated the interaction. Now we do actually get to see about 59% of the surface of the Moon from Earth, not 50%. This discrepancy comes from the fact that the Moon's orbit around the Earth is not perfectly circular, it's in fact more of an ellipse. As the Moon's distance from the Earth increases and decreases, its angular speed changes, while its rotational speed stays the same. The result is that we get to see an extra 9% of its surface than if it were in a perfectly circular orbit. The other side of this, as you might have guessed, is that the Moon has the same effect on the Earth and is gradually slowing the Earth's rotation in the exact same way the Moon became tidally locked with the Earth. Further, as the Moon slows the Earth's rotation, a small portion of the Earth's rotational momentum gets transferred to the Moon's orbital momentum, with the result being that the average radius of the Moon's orbit increases at about 3.8 centimeters per year, with the current continental positions and barring major geological events. Contrary to what you'll often read, the Moon isn't getting all the energy here. Most of it is being converted to heat via friction, with only an estimated 3% of the energy in the interaction being stolen by the Moon. Thus, the distance between the Moon and the Earth changes gradually and is more or less in step with the rotational period change. It should be noted, though, that it's not a constant change, as things like major earthquakes, glacial changes, continental drift, and other such geological events do play a role here, which is why leap seconds aren't added at regular intervals, but only when needed. But the overall effect is that over time, the Moon is getting farther and farther away from the Earth every year, while the Earth's rotation is slowing down. In theory, at some point, tens of billions of years from now, with the exact time frame being extremely difficult to nail down due to so many unknowable factors, the same side of the Earth will always face the Moon, with the Earth only rotating once per lunar cycle, which at that point most estimates should indicate should be about 47 current Earth days long. This is all in theory, but it's likely never going to happen. Well, because in about 1 to 2 billion years, the sun's brightness is going to have increased sufficiently to vaporize all water on the surface of the Earth, getting rid of ocean tides altogether, which is a huge factor in this interaction. However, there still would be some bulging of the Earth's crust to continue the process 
to a much lesser extent. In five to six billion years or so, the Sun will be around the peak of its red giant phase, and according to most models, even with the Sun losing quite a bit of its mass during this process, thus making the Earth's orbit farther out, the Sun should just barely consume the Earth and the Moon many billions of years before such a dual tidal lock can occur. Bottom line, at some point in the next billion years or so, humans will need to either find another home or figure out how to manually move our current one to a farther out orbit, keeping Earth in the habitable zone of our solar system. And look, the reality is that you're personally probably not going to need that knowledge. You will have been dead for a very, very long time. But, you know, you never know. Maybe you'll have your brain frozen or something like that. And that's where today's sponsor, Brilliant, comes in. And I'd like to tell you a bit about Brilliant before we get into today's bonus fact. Now you've heard me talk about Brilliant before, they're a learning platform that focuses on active learning. This is where you're given a short bit of information on a scientific concept and then asked to solve a problem based on that information. This is an incredibly effective way to learn. They've got courses on gravitational physics, so if you've enjoyed today's video, you're going to find that something well worth checking out. But really, that's just scratching the surface of all the courses that they have on there. Also, if you're kind of in a time pinch and you don't think you've got a lot of time to kind of sit down and really dive into a course, you'll really enjoy daily challenges, which are just five minutes that you can do every day, and they exercise your brain so you learn something new. Thousands of people have learned a ton of things. Each problem provides the context and the framework that you need to tackle it. That means you can learn and concepts by applying them. That's that active learning that I was talking about before. It's what's so great about Brilliant. This sort of short daily practice can lead you from curiosity to mastery in far less time than you might think. So go to brilliant.org forward slash brain food and finish your day a little smarter. And the first 200 of you to do that will get 20% off the annual subscription and you'll be able to view all of those daily challenges that are in their archives. And let's get into the bonus fact. There is technically no true dark side of the moon. As noted, the moon is still rotating, and despite the fact that we don't see it, the opposite side, from our perspective, still gets sunlight during that side's day. In fact, the only time the dark side of the moon is truly, totally dark is when we are seeing a full moon. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below. Don't forget to check out our fantastic sponsor, Brilliant. Checking them out and signing up helps support this show, so that's amazing. Thank you very much. And as always, I'll see you next time.